Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Shannon Sorensen and this is part two of a two video series of painting with me. In this second video, I am on my second day of working on this painting. And if you missed the first video, I will link to it in the show description below. You can go and check it out before you finish this. You can hit pause or you can just go back and watch it to see where I started. I am on my second day of this painting and as you can see I am pulling up an image of the painting so far on my iPad. I do really enjoy using some digital tools um, to create art and to enhance my creative process so I decided for this one I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next and I have a program called Adobe Fresco. The Adobe programs are really great. I've been using Photoshop and Illustrator and Lightroom for a long time with my graphic design and photography work. Um, but I recently got into using Adobe Fresco for the ability to create very realistic painting and drawing marks. So what I did here is I took a picture of the painting on my easel and I imported it into a new art document and here I am using my Apple Pencil and selecting colors that are already in the painting and this is a really useful tool because I can kind of play around with different colors and marks and areas that I might want to continue working on and just try a few different things before actually putting paint down on the canvas. At this point I've put a couple hours of work and layers into this painting and while normally I would say just go for it and take the risk and see what happens, I did get stuck to a point of not quite knowing where I wanted to take this piece. So using this digital tool I don't see it as a cheat, I just see it as another tool in my tool belt kind of getting to plan and preview what I want to do next. Yes, I can erase on the screen, which I can't do on an actual canvas with real paint. So some people might not like this method of creating, but I just see it as another tool, another way of trying something new. And honestly, the way that my brain works lately, <laughs> this is a really good way for me to work through what I'm feeling stuck on. It's a little bit lower risk because like I said, I'm not putting any paint on the canvas until I get a better idea of where I'm going to be going with this. So I have some green and some blue. I did want to simplify a couple areas and break up some of the more busy energetic areas. I wanted to add a little bit of space and breathing room so that when you're looking at the piece your eye travels a bit more easily and it's not feeling so frenetic. But I did also want to keep some of the depth and layer and texture that I had created the day before. So here I'm just playing around with which colors I might want to add. And again, this is a digital mock-up. So this is not exactly what I'm going to be doing once I do start putting paint on the canvas. But it's really just to help myself visualize a bit better what is possible. I really like using Adobe Fresco. I've used it to draw the coloring pages that I sell in my shop. I started drawing coloring pages at the beginning of COVID and quarantining when my kids were home. Up oh, here I'm just simulating what some drips might look like if I wanted to break up that middle area a little bit, which I don't think I actually do once I start painting, but I just wanted to see what that would look like. Um, yeah, so at the beginning of, you know, staying home in 2020, I was home with my kids, you know, we all know, we didn't think we were going to be home for that long, but I wanted to do something fun and creative, 
So I sat down with a piece of paper and a marker and I drew a coloring page. And I said, oh, this will be fun for the kids. It'll take them some time to color in. And actually what I found was I really enjoyed the process of drawing. And the second one that I drew, I did on a giant poster board. It has a ton of details. It's all these little sections of different vignettes and designs. And my husband, who is amazing and supportive, said, we need to get you set up to do this digitally so that you can really explore and play around with this drawing. So I started using Adobe Fresco and I got an Apple Pencil and I really love the product. I think it's the closest product you can use digitally to create art that looks more physical. I haven't honestly used Procreate, so I can't really speak to that. I know a lot of designers and digital artists enjoy using Procreate. I haven't used it yet, so I can't speak to it. I can only speak to this one, but I do really enjoy it. I have made a few digital art pieces on it, and recently, last month, I created a digital painting that, for the first time, I really paid attention to my own process of painting physically and translated that to how I created in the digital piece. So the amount of layering and the different sizes and styles of brushes, I really tried to start to finish make something that even though it is digital looked like one of the physical paintings I would make. So I kind of figured out what I wanted to do with this and I set it up next to the canvas so I could kind of glance over and reference it. I didn't stick exactly to what I created on the iPad, but I did want a visual reference so I could kind of play around a little bit more with what I was seeing on the screen and then what I was seeing in front of me. So here I'm just setting it up to my left. If you're new here, I am a painter. I paint out of my home. I live in a little condo in Connecticut. I have two young kids and I have been working from home on my various creative jobs for almost seven years now. Um, one of my kids is in elementary school and the other little one is on a little bit of a break from preschool. So we are home a lot. <laughs> so that's my primary workspace. I don't have an art studio. I have a setup in the front corner of my living room next to a nice big window. So I get nice natural light every day of the year. And right now it's winter in New England. So it's it's actually snowing and sleeting out right now. It's kind of a gross day. So getting to do this voiceover and looking at this colorful painting is actually a pretty nice way to spend the morning. But I have my setup with all my tools around me that I need. It's a very compact setup that I can move around if I need to move to my dining room table or a different space within the house. I can pretty easily do that. Um, and you know, I just love creating art with what I have in the space that I have. And when I am able to, I hope to have a little bit more of a dedicated, bigger space to move around. But for now, I'm very happy with where I'm at. So getting started here, starting to add paint. Um, you saw on the iPad, I was working with a lot of blue and some white, really trying to pull the composition together. Where I left off in the first video, I had a pretty good idea of where I wanted it to go, but I just really needed to sleep on it and look at it with fresh eyes. And also to look at it in new daylight. Sometimes I work in the afternoon and into the evening, and the sun sets and my indoor lights are not very bright. So 
sometimes I'm working in very dim light and I really just need to hit pause and wait until the sun is up again and I can see what the colors are really doing. Um, I think I'm squeezing out a lot of paint here, which is why you're not seeing me <laughs> actually working on the canvas. And I'm also finally setting up a pretty good new recording setup so you'll have a much better view of my canvas. I obviously want you to be able to see everything that I'm working on as I am doing it, um, including the whole space. Um, it's definitely been a, lear a learning process for me. So hopefully by the next time you see a Paint With Me episode, it will be much easier to uh, take in the whole picture and I won't have a I won't have a phone camera dangling over my forehead. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a behind the scenes video and show you kind of how I set things up and how I move things around to make it work with the space that I have. So here I really wanted to define that middle section. I talked about it in the first video, but my art style is heavily inspired by landscapes as well as kind of a spiritual intuitive aspect of dreamscapes and exploring just worlds of color and energy and marks that feel like they are definitely a place but it's not a specific image it's not a specific real place it's imagined it's kind of brought to life as I go. So, you know, using abstraction and expression and movement with the brush strokes and the colors, I really want to create pieces that everyone can look at and enjoy and see something in them that they connect with whether it's the colors or if it looks like a place that feels familiar to them. Um, I really just want to create art that helps people feel better, helps people feel calm or joyful, gives them a feeling of peace, of familiarity. And for my own process, a lot of what I create is influenced by the day, the weather, my mood, whatever I'm listening to. I have a lot of playlists that I love listening to as I paint. And just depending on the day, it might be some Beatles, it might be some folk music, some classic rock. I love listening to all different types of music. Um, it helps me kind of stay present in the moment and stay loose Sometimes I like to move with the music, dance a little bit, and uh, move my brush around the canvas to go along with whatever song I'm listening to. I actually had a lot of fun the other day. My daughter started playing the viola this year, and she had to practice, and she was kind of resisting having to sit down and practice. And I said, you know what? If you sit next to me and start practicing... I will paint along with what you play. So it kind of made it a little bit of a game and it was fun for both of us. Um, it was fun for her to see me making some crazy brush, brush strokes along with whatever she was practicing. I do try to keep in mind whenever I am painting to keep it loose, keep it playful, um, you know, there's a time and a place in all things, I think, to be serious and to be a bit more lighthearted. Um, and when I started painting, you know, I was exploring how I was feeling. Um, I'd experienced a really hard personal loss in late 2018 and I was going through a lot of grief and a lot of emotional stuff that was really heavy. And I started painting more and it was very calming for me. It was very soothing. But I was dealing with a lot of heavier things um, personally. So 
I think that reflected a lot in the stuff that I was making at that time. And, you know, I absolutely have days where (laughs) my mood affects how I'm feeling about things and the colors that I choose. But um, it's definitely been a journey. It's definitely been a process over the past three years using art as a tool, as a therapy, as a mode of soothing and feeling better. Um, I just love using creativity. There are so many things we can do um, when we need some comfort, when we need some calm, when we need to get out our sadness or our anger. Um, Another thing that I really enjoy doing is crocheting. So if I'm not feeling like painting, sometimes I'll sit down and spend a couple hours at night before I go to bed. I'll work on crocheting a blanket or a hat or a scarf. Um, Fairly simple projects, but, you know, it's very similar to painting where once you get into the flow of what you're doing, it is very calming and meditative. Um, And that's another thing that helped me work through my grief journey because it is a journey. It comes and goes. Um, You know, as we experience things in life that are difficult, there are just so many things that affect how strongly we receive these feelings and these emotions and how we process them. I have gone through times where I feel like I'm doing well and I'm feeling healed and joyful and then something just hits me out of nowhere very unexpected and knocks me off my feet Um, and then there's days where I experience something that a couple years ago would have been incredibly difficult but for whatever reason in the moment I just might feel at peace and okay um So, you know, it's the whole, it's the whole human experience. And I do find that, um, art has been an incredible thing in my life. And I know there are many people who over the past couple years with COVID and all the various things that life has dealt everyone, um, Many people have turned to art and creative activities and hobbies. I did move, sorry, to pause right here. I did end up moving the camera, realizing that it was really not in a great position. I think it moves maybe one more time after this. Um, You know, a lot of people turn to art, turn to painting and drawing and learning how to knit or crochet, just things that they found to be soothing, to be helpful dealing with the stress and the just many difficulties that the past couple years have brought. So one thing that I want to share, I just like kind of sharing some of my background and where I come from with why I choose to do certain things with my art. Um, I always work with a fairly colorful palette Um, even though the past couple times I've sat down to paint, I have tried to limit (laughs) the number of colors that I use just as my own little personal challenge to myself. Um, you know, it's always good to try new things and learn and grow, but I do generally love using a lot of color. I have always loved colorful things, whether it's clothing or jewelry or decorating my house or my room, um, I've always loved having color all around me. I went through a phase a couple years ago where I was trying really hard to do the minimalist thing, you know, when all these trends started coming up about decluttering and simplifying and keeping your house very clean and bright and white and empty. (laughs) I tried doing these things and it always felt like an uphill battle because I felt very unsettled not having a colorful home. Um, And even trying to do a minimalist thing, I always kept these like very very vibrant, strong pops of color 
in my decor, whether it was a throw pillow or a vase with a plant or books. Um, And finally, I said, why am I even trying to fight this? I love color. I enjoy color. Why am I trying to create a home or lifestyle that is not true to me and the things and colors that I love? So if you were to walk into my house, you see a very eclectic collection of art and books and just things that make us happy as a family. Creating a happy home has been more important than ever over the past couple of years because we've spent so much time at home. And, um, you know, I think everyone's home should really be a reflection of the things that you enjoy, not what other people are telling you is cool and trendy and, you know, the hot thing of the moment, but really just creating a space that you love and that feels comfortable and makes you happy and you can just sit and be yourself and enjoy life. I'm actually really loving where this painting ended up coming together. Um, I had some really back and forth feelings about it where it felt like I was doing too much. I was painting over things that I had some regrets about, but ultimately, um, in this video, you're seeing a lot more small marks and a lot of that was really just trying to, I think, blend these areas together. In the first video, I talked about the rule of thirds when it comes to composition and creating these spaces that if you were looking at your art like a tic-tac-toe grid, you know, with two lines going down and two lines going across, creating these areas of thirds throughout a piece that help break up the space and make it pleasing to the eye to look at um, where there's areas that are a bit more colorful and energetic and then other areas that are a bit more calm and soothing. Um, But this second day of painting, I really wanted to find a way to bring all of those sections together so it felt harmonious so it didn't feel like there was these random splotches of I don't know what was going on (laughs) so this day was a lot more small mark making and brightening up you can see here I'm using this very vibrant orange um one thing that I really love is if you look at Van Gogh's work how many different colors he uses to represent something whether it's the sky or grass or everything that he's painting it's never just a big flat space of color it's a lot of colors working together to create that feeling of what you're looking at So here I'm using the same colors I've used before, but really intentionally adding these smaller marks to brighten them up. So I have an idea of what it's going to look like, but now it's really taking the colors that are already on the canvas and layering the same colors on top because the day before, you know, some of these areas get really overworked and especially using a lot of wet paint. um, Some of the colors get a little muddy or blended together in such a way that doesn't quite feel the way I want it to. So by adding these little marks complementing all the blue down at the bottom Um, you know blue and orange are harmonious on the color wheel if you're looking at a color wheel um, you have your primary colors which are red yellow and blue and then the colors that are opposite of them are the most complementary so blue and yellow make green 
and green is opposite red. Red and yellow make orange and orange is opposite blue. And blue and red make purple and purple is opposite yellow. So if you're ever wondering which colors complement each other best, that is the very basic. <laughs> That's the basics of color harmonies on the color wheel. And then there's the whole spectrum within that. So just brightening up those sky bits, really making sure that yellow and orange pop. And I actually really love how the bottom turned out. I wasn't sure if I wanted that to be warmer or cooler. It's always funny going back and watching videos like this and seeing the different stages that I go through with different parts of a painting. There was a point in the first video where I kind of paused and said, oh, I actually really like it right now. But I was in the middle of painting and it changed very quickly. That happens a lot. Um, seeing the progress of a painting. Sometimes I watch other painters paint and I'm like, oh, why did they just cover that up? And then, you know, by the end, it all makes sense. Always trust that if the painter's still working on it, then it's not done. When you decide that it's done, only then is it truly done? And I think that is sometimes the hard part. We could always keep going. We could always keep layering and adding and changing. Um, but I do find that the more I paint, the more I can recognize when a piece truly feels finished. All right, so here I finally popped out the camera to a wider angle. So you can really see the top edges, the sides, and the whole composition overall. Like I said, in my next videos, I will have a much better setup. It'll be more straight on, not from this top view angle. <laughs> I do work on um, a tabletop easel. I like to sit while I'm painting um, just because I like to work for these longer stretches and the space that I work in, it just works better to have my little tabletop easel and have my art cart next to me and my music and my, my window and my chair. <laughs> it's my little art nook. I enjoy it. I'll definitely do um, a little bit more of a quote unquote studio tour if that's something you're interested in seeing. I do just want to encourage you that if you want to paint, if you want to make art, if you want to do any creative things, just get started. You don't have to have this big professional studio space. You don't need the most expensive brushes or tools. You really just need to start with what you have and upgrade when and where you can. <laughs> but it's really about the creative process. It's not about what you're using. It's about how you feel and what you learn as you go. Risks that you take or sometimes the safety nets that you use, you know, using the iPad to kind of suss out how I wanted to proceed with this. Felt like a little bit of a safety net, but I made that decision that I wasn't willing to just start swathing paint all over this without having a much clearer idea of where it was going to go. So here I am adding in some light highlights to brighten up that middle section. these little energetic marks that really pull you in and want you to get really close and see how the colors move and interact together. I 
I know I say this almost every single time I finish a painting, but I really just fall in love with my art. There's such an emotional attachment and it's hilarious to me because obviously this is the work that I do and I want to sell it. And at the same time, it's kind of like raising a child where there's just this strong emotional attachment because of the journey I go on every single time I sit down to paint, whether it's a happy thing or a sad thing or an emotional breakthrough or whatever, I find that I just fall so deeply in love and attached with the pieces that I create. So when it is time to let them go and send them to their new home, that in that in and of itself is a process. Um, and it's something that I'm still very new to so maybe it'll get easier with time I don't know um but there are definitely also times when I finish a piece and I know that I'm gonna hang on to it maybe let go of it someday but um I think it's also important to create for yourself not just to sell 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 you know, we all have different intentions with what we create. Some people create for hobbies and just for pleasure. Some people create for work. And I am finding the balance between that because it is such a therapeutic, spiritually connective process for me that while I do this for my full-time work I am also finding ways to paint and create things that I can more easily let go of and sell and also be open to creating paintings for myself that I do want to keep so here I am just adding these smaller highlights these energetic marks to kind of blend together make these blues and oranges feel a little bit more harmonious I think I might have some light yellow adding in there but I'm really just loving truly loving where this one ended up and at the end of the last video I honestly had no idea if I was going to continue with what I had in front of me or if I was going to cover it with white and completely start over. Um, and I feel like maybe this is where a lot of paintings end up going, where the beginning is very open-ended and just playful and putting down paint and making marks. The middle is where you start playing with the composition and carving out a little bit more structure but still you know having to be open to possibly making some bigger changes and then towards the end really being intentional with your marks and you know the finalization of an overall piece so much that goes into it So here, um, since this is a canvas, it's not on stretcher bars, um, like you kind of see stretched out canvases that are ready to paint on. This was a recycled canvas that I got from another artist to use as I wished. So um, I had several canvases that I got from another artist in town, and I ended up cutting them off the stretcher bars and cutting them into smaller pieces to work with and so this is one of the last pieces of canvas that I have from that set so it's not on any sort of frame it's just a loose canvas and this is actually an artboard from college that I had when I was doing my basic drawing classes so it has the clips at the top so I just had it clipped up there usually when I 
paint on paper I tape the paper to the board you can kind of see the outlines of where <laughs> the paint goes over the edges um, but yeah this one was clipped up at the top so I was just making sure the top edge blended well where it was clipped on there and made sure that I didn't forget to leave this <laughs> top edge finished and I think this is the point where I decide it's good it's done it feels oh this one was a journey it really was a journey and I loved all the different things I worked through I love the top right area where it looks like there's a couple different suns peeking out from behind that sky it gives it a kind of otherworldly feeling and I really hope you enjoyed going through this process with me again if you didn't watch the first video where I started this it's about 40 minutes long and it really was a little bit of a roller coaster figuring out what I wanted this piece to be um so if you didn't watch it and you are interested, I am linking it in the description below this video. Um, if you haven't yet, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and hit the thumbs up button. It gives me a good idea if people are enjoying this kind of content. Um, you can always leave comments below. You can connect with me over on Instagram. My Instagram is Shannon Sorensen Art. I love hearing from people if they find me over there from YouTube or vice versa. Um, and yeah, let me know if you have any questions about anything, about my process, about the tools that I use, about my setup. I love talking about art. Any, any conversation around art and creativity, I am an open book and I love... Um, finding ways that we can chat and inspire each other and work through the different challenges that we come across. Here I just really wanted to give you a really good view of a little bit further up close of some of the details. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Here you can see a little bit better my space where I sit and have some earrings in front of me that I painted. Those are all up on my website now um, if you feel like doing a little shopping. <laughs> but thank you again for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are. Take care.